fact and the medical component, the medical considerations uh, become extremely important, perhaps paramount to such a trip. Apollo 11 fulfilled man's long nurtured desire to walk the lunar surface and explore the wonder of the moon, once studied from Earth. The mission was a groundbreaking achievement in the 1900s, with two brave astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Aldrin Buzz, taking the front line and landing on the far side of the moon. But there is a third astronaut, which many people don't know. He is called Michael Collins, and it will shock you what this man has to share about the spooky experiences they encountered while on the moon that no one dares to talk about. What secret experience does he have to share, and why is he speaking now? Keep watching to find out. Throughout ancient civilizations, the moon has held cultural and religious significance for humanity. Many cultures have tracked lunar phases for agricultural and calendrical purposes, while others often associated it with deities and mythologies. But that's not all. Ancient Greeks and philosophers like Anaxagoras and Aristotle had begun to observe the moon through telescopes, questioning its nature. This was the early stage of lunar studies. However, the Renaissance period would later bring about a more systematic lunar observation of the moon, contributing to our understanding of its lunar surface features. In the mid-20th century, this understanding of the moon will further advance, marking a turning point in the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. Starting with unmanned space probes, the competition to explore the lunar surface was intense and in 1959, the Soviet Luna 2 became the first human-made object to impact the moon. This was just the very beginning of what was to come. Following this, numerous lunar missions were soon set into motion. These manned and unmanned missions focused on scientific research, providing insights into lunar geology, composition, and history. The moon was also used to observe Earth and the cosmos, making it a testing ground for various space technologies, including rovers and landers. These developments in turn paved the way for future exploration of other planets and celestial bodies. Countries like China and India have also launched successful lunar missions, contributing to our understanding of the moon. Apart from nations' space activities, the moon has also gained attention from private companies, who are largely interested in mining its resources, such as water ice and the recently discovered helium-3, which could support future lunar bases or fuel deep space missions. There are also plans for future lunar exploration, including establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon, utilizing the moon as a stepping stone for deeper space exploration and potential colonization. But we must remember that major lunar explorations like the Apollo 11 mission had to be pioneers for all this to happen. As for the Apollo 11 mission, it was indeed groundbreaking, stretching the boundaries of what was possible for a man in the past. But that is not all, as the mission would also result in spooky experiences that hold great lessons for mankind. So, let us talk about the Apollo 11 lunar expenditure and how it changed everything. In case you didn't know, Apollo 11 was the first manned mission to land humans on the moon successfully. Launched by NASA on July 16th and landing on the lunar surface on July 20th, 1969, the spacecraft consisted of three main parts, the command module, the service module, and the lunar module. The crew included astronauts Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, and Michael Collins, who was mostly an unknown guy. The reasons for this will be explained as we go on. During the mission, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin descended to the lunar surface in the lunar module named Eagle, while Michael Collins continued orbiting the moon in the command module named Columbia. Here, Collins would wait alone, keeping watch and communicating with Earth until his crew members returned, after which he would safely deliver them back to Earth. This duty had probably relegated him to the background because it meant he would not explore the lunar surface like his colleagues. However, this did not downplay his crucial role in the expenditure. Later, Armstrong would become the first person to step onto the lunar surface, followed shortly by Aldrin. This feat sure did mean a lot to Armstrong, as he is known for his famous words as he stepped down the ladder, saying that the accomplishment was one small step for a man and one giant leap for mankind. During their time on the moon, Armstrong and Aldrin conducted experiments, collected samples, and took photographs. 
they spent about 21 hours on the lunar surface, making it worthwhile before rejoining Collins in the command module in lunar orbit. The astronauts soon returned to Earth, splashing safely in the Pacific Ocean on July 24, 1969. Indeed, for everyone, the Apollo 11 mission marked a significant achievement in space exploration and symbolized a major milestone in human history. But there is more. Let's talk about the price. A man had to pay for Apollo 11 to be a success which nobody else seems to realize. We must recall that though Collins was not on the front line, he had played a unique role as the command module pilot. But the question is, what exactly did he have to do? Here is the catch. Though Collins had to remain in the lunar orbit throughout the mission, he was not idle while at it. His primary responsibility included maintaining the command module's trajectory around the moon, which is no small feat. It involved carefully adjusting the spacecraft's path to ensure it remained in a stable orbit while communicating with Earth. Yes, Collins stood as the bridge between those on the moon and Earth. The command module was equipped with communication equipment that allowed Collins to relay information between the lunar module on the moon's surface and mission control back on Earth. This way, he could effectively act as the vital link between both, ensuring that two-way communication was maintained. But it was not all rosy for Collins on the job. While Armstrong and Aldrin were on the lunar surface, Collins, on his part, spent about 21 hours alone in the command module orbiting the moon. This was one moment of solitary which would have scared the hell out of many in his position, but Collins described this experience as rather peaceful and isolating, with moments of profound solitude which is quite surprising. After Armstrong and Aldrin completed their historic moonwalk and returned to the lunar module, the LM ascended, rejoining Collins in lunar orbit. The two spacecraft then docked and the astronauts returned to the command module. Once the astronauts were safely back in the command module, Collins soon swung into action again, playing a crucial role in the journey back to Earth. He operated the spacecraft's systems, including navigation and propulsion, to ensure a precise re-entry trajectory. Fortunately, on July 24, 1969, the command module re-entered Earth's atmosphere and splashed in the Pacific Ocean. The crew was recovered by the USS Hornet, marking the successful conclusion of the Apollo 11 mission. From this, you can see that Michael Collins' role as the command module pilot was integral to the mission's success. While he didn't set foot on the moon like Armstrong and Aldrin, his contributions were essential for ensuring the safe return of the entire crew to Earth. Since the groundbreaking success of the Apollo 11 mission, lunar exploration has undergone significant developments and achievements. The Apollo program, USA, soon pioneered other Apollo missions, including Apollo 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17, which landed astronauts on the moon between 1969 and 1972. On the moon, astronauts conducted experiments, collected samples, and explored the lunar surface. However, amidst all of this, the Soviet Union, which happens to be one of the giants of lunar explorations, stayed on their path not sending humans to the moon, but rather maintaining robotic missions that conducted sample returns and explored the moon's surface as well. Despite how contributive the Apollo 11 mission was to Luna's explorations, it is important to note that going and returning from the moon was not as simple of an experience as you think. Still, you wouldn't know this because not everything encountered on the mission had been disclosed. We are talking about some more spooky encounters you wouldn't have imagined could have occurred. These spooky encounters had remained hidden until recently, when Collins opened up to share some of them. But what exactly did he encounter on the moon? And how did it impact humanity? Let's discuss Michael Collins's encounter on the far side of the moon. The far side of the moon, often referred to as the dark side, even though it receives sunlight just like the near side, has been a subject of scientific interest and exploration. But this is not without reason. One unique characteristic of the far side is that it is shielded from most radio signals originating from Earth due to the Moon's rotation and its position relative to our planet. This makes it an ideal location for radio astronomy and universe observations without terrestrial interference. Another unique feature of this region is its distinct appearance compared to the near side of the Moon. It is heavily cratered and has a more rugged topography, 
with fewer large, dark planes called Maria, prominent on the near side. One of the largest and oldest impact basins in the solar system, the South Pole Aitken Basin, is located on the far side. This region is particularly interesting to scientists because it provides insights into the Moon's early history and the processes that shaped its surface. As an advantage, the far side of the Moon offers a unique environment for scientific investigations. Its geological features and ancient impact sites provide valuable information about the Moon's formation and evolution. Studying the far side also contributes to understanding the impact of cratering processes and the solar system's history. This region is expected to be a focus of future lunar exploration as it is relatively unexplored terrain, holding the potential for discoveries, and it could serve as a location for future lunar bases or observatories. NASA's Artemis program, for example, aims to send astronauts to the lunar south pole, which is part of the far side. But let's talk about Michael Collins's encounter on this part of the moon, shall we? It turns out that while he was orbiting the moon awaiting his colleagues, Michael Collins's command module had dipped behind the far side of the moon, and this instantly blocked his communications with Earth, making him completely isolated, more than 300,000 kilometers from home. At this point, he declared himself truly alone, as he was no longer communicating with his colleagues on the lunar surface and those on Earth. His encounter with this region reinforced the radio-silent attributes of the far side of the moon. Now here is a quick explanation of what this implies. Here, radio-silent refers to the phenomenon where the moon's far side is shielded from most radio signals originating from Earth. This would simply mean that one cannot receive radio signals from Earth on this spot. This occurs due to the moon's synchronous rotation, meaning it takes almost the same amount of time to complete one rotation on its axis as it does to orbit Earth. As a result, the same side of the moon always faces Earth, and the far side remains hidden from direct radio communication. The moon's synchronous rotation results from gravitational interactions between Earth and the moon. It's why we always see the same face of the moon from Earth. This rotation pattern causes the far side of the moon to be perpetually turned away from our planet. Radio signals, including those used for communication with spacecraft and satellites, travel in straight lines. When these signals encounter a solid object, such as the moon, they can be reflected, absorbed, or refracted. But this only happens to the side of the moon facing Earth or the nearby side directly exposed to these signals. In line with this, the moon's far side acts as a natural shield, blocking radio signals from reaching the lunar surface that is facing away from Earth. This reduces radio interference and creates a quieter electromagnetic environment on the far side. Interestingly, the radio silent environment of the moon's far side is advantageous for conducting radio astronomy observations. Radio astronomers can utilize this shielded area to study cosmic phenomena and signals from space without the interference of radio signals generated on Earth. Because of the potential of this discovery, Spacecraft exploring the far side of the moon must use relay satellites placed in orbit around the moon to facilitate communication with mission control on Earth. These relay satellites are positioned to maintain line-of-sight communication between Earth and the spacecraft on the far side. One of the remarkable expenditures to the far side of the moon was made by China's Chang'e 4 lunar exploration mission. The Chang'e 4 is a remarkable lunar exploration mission conducted by the China National Space Administration, CNSA. Launched on December 7, 2018, the mission achieved a significant milestone by becoming the first spacecraft to successfully land on the far side of the moon. This region faces away from Earth and is relatively unexplored. Here are some notable achievements of the Chang'e 4 lunar exploration mission. Chang'e 4's lander successfully touched down in the von Karman crater within the South Pole Aitken Basin on the far side of the moon. This marked the first soft landing on the far side and provided an opportunity to study this region's unique geology and terrain. Chang'e 4 carried the U-22 rover, deployed onto the lunar surface. U-22 is equipped with scientific instruments to analyze the moon's composition and terrain and ground-penetrating radar to study subsurface structures. Hence, U-22 conducted detailed surveys of the lunar surface, studying its geology, 
mineral composition, and the structure of rocks and regolith. This information helped scientists gain insights into the moon's formation and evolution. The mission's location within the von Karman crater allowed examining an impact crater and its surrounding area. Impact craters are particularly interesting to scientists because they reveal information about the moon's history and surface processes. Chang'e 4 also carried a low-frequency spectrometer, LFS, to study low-frequency radio signals that are difficult to detect on Earth due to interference from our planet's ionosphere. As part of a biosphere experiment, the mission carried a small container called the Lunar Mini Biosphere that contained cotton, rapeseed, potato, Arabidopsis seeds, fruit fly eggs, and yeast. The goal was to test the feasibility of plant growth in the lunar environment. All these activities point to how far the Chang's 4's mission went, which is crucial in expanding our understanding of the moon's far side and providing valuable scientific data that contributes to lunar and planetary research. But we must recognize the likes of the Apollo 11 missions, which would always be a worthy pacesetter to all the recent developments that have taken place in lunar exploration. In the end, the whole experience of the Apollo 11 mission had a profound impact on Michael Collins's perspective. Viewing Earth from space gave him a unique and humbling view of our planet's fragility and unity. This shift in perspective is known as the overview effect, which describes the cognitive and emotional shift many astronauts experience when they see Earth from space. This perspective shift often leads to a profound change in their outlook on life, the planet, and humanity's place in the universe. When astronauts see Earth from space, they no longer perceive national boundaries, conflicts, or differences that are so apparent from the ground. Instead, they see a fragile and interconnected planet suspended in the vastness of space. This realization often fosters a sense of unity and a deeper understanding of the importance of cooperation and environmental stewardship. As he piloted the command module around the moon during the Apollo 11 mission while Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the lunar surface, he was isolated from Earth and the moon, giving him a unique perspective. He later remarked that he felt a strong connection to humanity and a profound appreciation for Earth's beauty and vulnerability. This experience likely caused a shift in Collins' view on life. He realized the need to address global challenges collaboratively and prioritize the well-being of our planet. This sentiment is often shared by other astronauts who have experienced the overview effect, leading them to become advocates for environmental conservation, international cooperation, and space exploration for the betterment of humanity. Today, several decades have passed since the Apollo 11 mission, but the moon remains a hotspot for space explorations, with remarkable achievements already made and still being made. Following this, the list of explorations will likely never end. Some of the recent lunar explorations include China's Chang program, which involves several lunar missions. Chang'e 3, 2013, successfully deployed a rover called U-2 on the moon's surface, and Chang'e 4, 2019, achieved the first soft landing on the far side of the moon. India also seems to be recently working with their Chandrayaan program, including Chandrayaan-1, 2008, which confirmed the presence of water molecules on the lunar surface, and Chandrayaan-2, 2019, which included an orbiter, lander, and rover. There is also NASA's Artemis program, USA. Artemis's program aims to return humans to the moon, focusing on sustainable exploration and potential future lunar habitation. The Artemis missions plan to land astronauts near the lunar South Pole. Now, though these missions have collectively contributed to our understanding of the Moon's history, geology, and potential resources, we are also sure that there is more to see as they are, in turn, paving the way for future exploration and potential utilization of the lunar environment. Thanks for watching. Don't miss this video on your screen right now. It's amazing!